Hello, everyone in Dynamite Land. Uh, I'm Vincent Faust on the Dynamite crew. Today, we're chatting with one of our great creators. So, Betty Page, Curse of the Banshee, number one, is out this week. It's available starting this Wednesday, June 2nd, from your local comic shop, as well as online and digital retailers. If you need help finding your nearest store, head to comicshoplocator.com. And we've tagged in writer and renaissance man Stephen Mooney for a quick chat on the book's release. So how are you doing today, Steve? Great. I like that description. It's good. <laughs> Gives me more weight than I deserve. I'll take uh, it. Yeah. He, I mean, Renaissance man, I think that fits. You know, you're, you're a multi-talented man in the world of comics, at least. Um, and that's where that the world of comics is what matters to us. So we've got a couple questions just to run through to talk about the upcoming issue, talk about the series, get fans excited, um, and then we'll leave you on your day and we'll leave fans to read the book, hopefully. So the first thing, kind of generic, you know, typical question everyone wants to know, and maybe more of a question to ask the editorial gang internally for us, um, but how did this project really, you know, all come together? Um, I was, I was all through editorial. Like you say, it was just Rybant is the editor on this one, and he got on to me um, the guts of a year ago now, sometime last year. Um, he knew I had done stuff for Dynamite previously, a bits of uh, things like James Bond and covers around the place on uh, The Spirit and other books like that, and he knew my work on my own series, Half Past Danger, which is a very pulpy uh, toned book. It's got a lot of similarities to the world of Betty Page, I think, as told by Dynamite Comics. So I think he uh, thought that maybe I'd have a decent story in me. And um, he got on to me and asked if I'd be interested. And I, uh, I knew a lot of the previous material that David Avalon had written. So um, I was a fan of the character and of Betty in real life. So I think it was a natural enough fit. And Joseph probably knew that there could be something there if we got together on it. So that's how it came about, um, due to previous stuff that I'd done for Dynamite and other publishers. And uh, it worked out pretty pretty seamlessly, I think. We got going fairly quickly, um, a little bit of back and forth between us, and uh, there were no real issues once I knew exactly what you guys were looking for and exactly what I wanted to bring to it. And then the happy marriage of those elements, we got to where we are now. So we started with the one shot, and then we went into the series. And uh, yeah, so far, so good. Touch wood, hopefully they'll dig the series. Yeah, you quickly referenced uh, David Avaloni, so that's a perfect transition. I was curious, had you read the previous Betty Page comics, you know, beforehand, or, or you know, probably for research? And are there little nuggets from those stories that longtime readers will appreciate seeing in, in your take on the character? Yeah, I was a fan of the stuff. I hadn't read everything, but I had read some of the series. There was quite a lot of output between him and Julius Ogta, mainly on the art, which, which I was a big fan of as well. So I asked uh, Editorial Air to fill in the gaps and the stuff I hadn't read. Like it was a Halloween special and uh, a couple of other um, smaller elements, like one shot. So I read all that stuff before I began and enjoyed all of it. And the big elements that I wanted to take, well, firstly, Lissa as her partner, I really enjoyed. So um, Lissa Druk. So, She's in play in the series now. She wasn't in the one shot that we started with, but she's heavily in play in this uh, longer mini series. Um, as I'm a big, big fan of the dynamic between Betty and Lissa, and it's nice to have that. Um, the two gals with the, the two hand are kind of in a, a caper vein, but also very on point and very professional. And there's a lot of good banter between the two of them that, that I like to play between and um, play off. And also, I wanted to tie up a couple of loose elements just on the whole ancient ones uh, overarching element of that big storyline that David had started. I mean, he tied it up in a, a neat bow and it was all done, but I felt there'd be still a few ramifications on Betty's psyche and just kind of really putting a, a dot on the end of that sentence. So there's a small element of that in the one shot, but now that's off the table totally and we're onto a whole separate villain, if you want to call it that, or a, a series nemesis in this miniseries once in Ireland, the curse of the Banshee, obviously the titular Banshee being the uh, or is she? But you know, we'll find out. But uh, so it was nice to get over that element and incorporate little bits and pieces of what David did, and then bring my own and um, my own storytelling aspects to that. Uh, like I say, Lisa being the main one. Yeah, like you say, Betty is off to your backyard of Ireland. Mm -hmm. uh, if and if people couldn't tell from your wonderful accent, <laughs> and she's traveled the globe in the previous series, and you even had her on another continent in our Kickstarter special, which you've also referenced. And which I think we should be offering, you know, in, in a different way, 
somewhat soon. So if, if you missed that on Kickstarter, definitely let us know in the comments and we'll, you know, make sure to figure out soon, you know, with this new series out, how we're going to offer it in different ways. Um, but what had you bring her to the motherland as it were? Well, it was mainly when I was thinking what would me, um, just to reflect back on what David had done with the character, he had started to introduce little supernatural elements of storytelling, like there was a werewolf in there and the Loch Ness Monster made an appearance, or um, kind of a, it was kind of a Loch Ness Monster. But So I, I enjoy, really enjoyed those aspects where they were getting a little bit x files -y, where they'd been sent on these cases where they had to... Um, they had to deal with these supernatural threats that maybe weren't being were being given short shrift by the department and nobody was really believing that they exist in the first place. So Betty and Lissa were the ones that they kind of just threw at those cases to take care of them and then they can shove them back under the rug. Uh, so I wanted to run with that aspect for this new series where it's kind of like, I, I described it as X-Files meets Scooby-Doo. It's still got that playful, flirty element where you've got to have a Betty where it's just pure fun. But then there's also kind of a detective story going on. It's a little bit noir and it's um, very pulpy, uh, kind of a whodunit. And so then that led, that led me to thinking, what's the best creature maybe to deal with uh, supernatural wise? And I figured we've got a ton of, a myriad of stuff in Ireland that has been touched on in the States and lot, through lots of publishing facets. But I figured maybe being Irish, I could give a different slant on some of that stuff, like, like the Banshee or um, even things like Leprechauns and things, which, you know, are played for laughs to a certain extent in other countries but they have roots in more um not serious but let's say malevolent uh ideologies and origins here in ireland so i wanted to play with that stuff a little bit and maybe deliver a version of that horror tinge story that readers in the states haven't really um seen before and i knew that i, I i'm a big fan of irish mythology and fairies and creatures of that ilk over here and it's still in play in society to a certain extent i mean we do all it is very old fashioned over, over here. I know people don't know how developed Ireland is in some aspects, but it's a, it's all Google and Facebook and international headquarters over here now, unless leprechauns and banshees. But I wanted to bring that stuff into play a little bit more and uh, tell an entertaining story with both Betty and Lissa, sent by McKnight over here to deal with a case that the Irish government have requested help for and just are hopelessly outmatched and have no idea how to deal with this kind of a threat. Uh, so all that just led me to go, well, I mean, I'm Irish. I can probably tell this story as well as anyone else can, so why not um, go down that avenue? And it, it came to me pretty quickly, and that's when you know, when you're not struggling to make pieces of the story fit, you know you're probably onto something, but if it all flows nicely and, and you're getting a laugh here and there and you're enjoying it yourself, that it's probably a decent story and uh, the readers will engage with it hopefully as well. Yeah, as I teased you, uh, you are a Renaissance man. You come from a background of doing comic art in addition to the writing side, both for yourself on Independent Project. You talked about Half Past Danger, which people should definitely check out, and as well as drawing from others' writing. So, and you're even doing several covers on this Betty series. So fans should definitely grab those up, you know, when they head to their shops and grab, you know, are, are adding to their pull list. So how has it been working with Jeffrey Morales and just the whole creative team as a whole? Oh, it's it's so gratifying. Uh, <laughs> the real answer is that I don't have to do the interior art, and that's by far the hardest job. And don't let anybody tell you different. So I'm glad I can just send in the scripts, which I do work hard at, and then get this artwork back, this glorious artwork from Jethro or Georgia, who did the one shot. And it's just uh, it's it's top notch stuff, like storytelling out the window, and all the character designs are bang on. And they've taken what I did. I designed the characters on the covers and then let the interior artists go their own way from there. And they've extrapolated that stuff in really cool ways that I might have thought of myself. So um, it's a lovely experience. It's it's um, it's just nice to be able to hand off that aspect. Like you say, I started in art. So I'm so used to, you know, if you want to say carrying that heavy load when it comes to the monthly grind of comic books. And, uh, and I still do that, like you say, I'm just drawing a story of Marvel at the minute and there's DC stuff and that. So I'm still heavily involved in the interior artwork side of things, but for Dynamite, it's pretty much writing and covers, which is a nice change and uh, I really enjoy doing it. And I've done covers for every issue that I'm on. So if people want you know, to engage my artwork on these stories, they can do that too. And uh, it's just a, it's a, really, it's a really nice situation to have. I'm enjoying it a lot, I have to say. Um, yeah, but I mean, I do, I guess I do do, I write, I draw, I color, I even letter my own comic cap as danger. So, but I don't know if it makes me a renaissance man. I think it just makes me a control freak, <laughs> to be honest with you. 
All right, we'll lead out with this. So as we said, of course, issue one is out this week. So what can readers look forward to in upcoming issues? And, and, and perhaps, well, I'll, I'll also say that, of course, those upcoming issues that they should be pre-ordering ASAP with their favorite retailers. Yeah, we've got some big stuff coming up. I mean, like I say, there's elements of a whodunit. In the first issue, we'll establish the scene and and possibly the villain, possibly not. And uh, I like to I like to leave cliffhangers at the end of every issue, so that hopefully will keep people coming back for more. But there's, I mean, there's that trademark banter between Betty and Lissa, and um, the the aspects I really enjoy of these ones is Ireland in the 1950s is a very different place to Ireland now, and women still didn't have an awful lot of rights at that stage in Ireland. Uh, for instance, there's a bar brawl in this story that is all caused by the fact that women weren't allowed in pubs in Ireland back then, which sounds crazy now, but that's just the way it was. You're supposed to be home rearing your children. Uh, so Betty and Lissa, of course, come into this blind and don't realize this is the situation. So there's a lot of fish out of water kind of scenarios where they're just not prepared to deal with these backward laws in Ireland. And uh, Lissa especially puts up against these rules, which leads to some fun stuff with the Irish police, the Gardaí, as they're known. And obviously there's a lot of supernatural elements where the Banshee is involved. Uh, but I think there'll be a little bit more at play there than people will initially see. Uh, it's not so quite so cut and dried as to who the uh, perceived villain to the book is. So uh, a lot of sleuthing on Betty's part. I think she's really playing into the role as a detective. It really fits her naturally um, because she's so inherently savvy and smart that she can just uh, lend herself to any, any role that way and just be super confident at it while all the time flirting with the best looking guy in the bar and, uh, you know, and slapping the monster across the jaw. So pulpy fun, mystery, a uh, little bit of horror, but not, you know, it's not an 18s book. It's it's uh, it's not R-rated. Everyone can read it and enjoy it, but uh, it does tinge on that aspect of things. And I really enjoyed it. I had a great time writing it, so I think readers will enjoy it. I hope so. And on that note, uh, when it hits new comic book day this week, head to your shop or whenever you can make it out there, grab the latest issue of Betty Page, as well as all the other great Dynamite comics you enjoy. Support Stephen Mooney's work. Follow him on social media. Follow us, of course. And uh, read more comics and enjoy comics. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in, checking out this quick little vid. And we hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>